is swing. I am an American. I'm going to the north. Again. Uphill battle. 300 Americans. Here's <laughs> now. It's 999. La guerre, la guerre, c'est la guerre fait toutes les familles qui séparent. Voilà, les membres entiers, il faut connaître. La guerre, c'est comme ça. Il faut finir la guerre. Les membres entiers, il faut finir la guerre. Il faut détruire toutes les armes des membres entiers. This is Casal. Minor. You're kidding me. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is you? Yes, this is me. Minor, how you doing, my brother? I'm doing good. Bless. Man, oh man, it's crazy what I've been hearing about you, eh? <laughs> Anyways, there's a piece called Why I Write. <clears throat> I write for men, women, and children, anyone who felt alone, anyone who felt disowned. See, I write for the bones buried in the country I call home. I write for you, the listeners, to so listen up. Take a step back, can imagine the bigger picture. Because I write the real, so feel me. I write for inner city street kids struggling to find their place in the world too concerned with race. I write for the moms and pop shops struggling to stay atop because the dope boys got the block and lock. Can't compete with the drama. So I write soap operas about single mothers and brothers about the struggle and hustle, the bustle in city where empty bellies rumble like solid earthquakes we shake. Hungry like young lions, we define the odds, praying to God, Lord, give us the strength to carry on. So I write to redefine the stars. Nah, none of that Hollywood glitz and glam with them stones that shimmer and glimmer, but some of that earthy residue that comes through it when it's being true. So I write to the few, hoping I get trickled down to the masses. I want to spark the world, man, be reborn in this ashes. I want to unfold their glasses and make them see their sons and daughters. They are banner to be bastards, know that we grow like molasses. I point to the north. A David Jones compass. Just follow the sounds of trumpets and listen up. Um, where should I begin? Um, 1980, I was born in a refugee camp. 81, went to the States, California, Southern California. Grew up out there, never knew my dad. I made a lot of bad choices, bad decisions growing up. So at the age of 16, I was already dropped out of school. No one could have probably reached me then because I was just too far off. I got caught up in a gang fight, not gang fight, but it was more of a gang war. At 16, I was charged and convicted of attempted murder. I went to prison. Ended up fighting life at the age of 16. I went to prison at the age of 16. I did 14 years, 14 years in prison. After doing those 14 years, instead of going home to my family, 
Um, immigration picked me up because I went to the States as a refugee. My permanent resident status wasn't permanent at all. They stripped that from me, did a year in immigration, and then a year ago, so March 17th, I got dropped off, parachuted out here to Cambodia. And I didn't know what Cambodia was, a place I never stepped my foot in. I thought so. Did you ever get to go home at all? No. Why not? You kidding? No. I can't believe America is that cruel. Brother, I'm so sorry that happened to you. It's my my tao khơi côn. My chong tao nơi chim mui côn. Chong khoi phot. In 99, I had ended up going to solitary confinement. I spent a year and a half in the hole. I was angry. I was lost. And then I heard somebody read some poetry. And this guy's name was Marty Williams. And he read it with such conviction. He read it with such feeling. Wow, that is beautiful. How do you do that? What is that? They said, well, Kasal, that's spoken word. Like, Man, I want that. Could you please tell Marty the things I'm doing out here is for him as well? OK. So London came around. They're gathering the first and largest gathering of performance artists, poets, from all over the world. Apparently someone came across my body of work and nominated me. And out of like 6,000 poets, I was chosen by their committee. 204 countries, 204 poets, and I was asked, to represent Cambodia. Am I the best person to represent Cambodia in this? I don't know that. Because sometimes I'm, I get stuck. Still thinking I'm still locked up. But I'm not. I was once locked up. But somewhere, somewhere, during that time in New Folsom, something happened. At one point in time, I wasn't locked up anymore. And something broke. Started making my path towards freedom. You know how he is, he thinks that what he does just doesn't matter much. Yeah, I know. Tell him he's an amazing person. Tell him that. Keep doing what he's doing. Keep writing. Keep, keep crying. <sighs> keep getting into that fire. And... Tell me about last night. Last night was fun. So we ended up chilling, ended up drinking. And we ended up going to the airplane because we could have a pool on a rooftop. So sleep is tricky. I get nightmares. Nightmares are good for price. Sometimes I'll have nightmares that I'm still doing time. And sometimes I'll get nightmares of me getting killed. And sometimes I'll have like dreams of me still being in the States, waking up, like, I'm at home, you know, and I never really felt that, so I wake up like all emotional and stupid stuff, and I stay up almost every night. Meyer was a, was an amazing individual, he, he surprised a lot of people because, you know, most people wrote him off as just this skinny little kid without much value, but. 
Well, once he stood up, he was a powerhouse. He was, uh, and he earned a lot of respect. He was awfully quiet, you know, he didn't say a lot, but then he would get up and do these pieces that were just mind-blowing. Everybody's, you know, jaws would hit the floor. But he struck me as uh, that there was like a volcano burning in there. There was some, some anger and rage and resentment that was just barely being contained most of the time. I feel that it's all have come a long way. I, I see a person growing with talent. That's so much talent in him. Saw somewhat have made it. And then he was just like, yo, but you gotta check out Casal. And then Casal stepped in, did his piece. I felt like the walls of my apartment disappeared. I was just like, what the fuck? That shit is dope. And then I was alone with, with him and his truth. This guy is just willing just to go do anything. This guy is so positive. Like, just ready to go. And he just got out. Like, he's been in jail for 15 years. That's what I saw in Casal. And all of a sudden, he's here in Cambodia for two months, and he's, like, loving life. He had this really quiet spark about him. The fire and the passion that he possesses is just, it's amazing. And if he keeps it up, he could become somebody even bigger and bigger. Once he started shining, the boys just don't stop shining. <laughs> he respects you, and if he loves you, he loves you for you. He's representing Cambodia, expats, exiles, and everyone that's been through some shit. Oh, well, I got a call from the embassy. Told me to pick up my documents. Um, hopefully, pick up my visa. Today is good. I woke up with all types of colors in my mind, man. Crimson, red, purple shoes, lavender, with a turquoise blue, and a tinge of deep amber that softens out of the edges. I just can't help but to smile. Then you look at these kids right here, right here. Hi. What are we waiting for? Some better for ourselves. We made a mistake in the States and now we have a second chance. I'm trying to make a difference. So my youth wasn't good. It wasn't a good youth. I didn't have a good youth. And I didn't want no, anybody to know that I couldn't read or write at the time. So I hid all those things from the people I hung around with a lot until I, one day I realized that you know what? I have to do something with my life. I can't depend on people all the time to read this for me, do this for me. I did 14 years in prison. The charge was attempted murder. That was the charge, attempted murder. Because of that choice that I made, I'm here today. Because of that choice that I made, I have nothing right now. You got it? Oh, he got it. He got it. He's coming out holding a yellow envelope right now. Come on, yellow, hold a yellow envelope. So what's up? Yes, no? I don't know, we got a text. She said this is my password. I don't know how, like... Check it out, open it up. I guess this might be, might be it. Let me see. If it's approved or what? <laughs> That's too Bangkok, right? Oh, I think this is it. Yep. UK entry clearance. Yep. Right? Yep. That's huh? the one. These are type tier five? Yep. It's been approved? That's right. Huh? It's been, it's approved? been approved? Going to the UK. Honored and blessed and speechless. Oh, I got to give you a hug, homie. Mm. You made it, fool. You made it. You made it. 
the ground up, man. Ground up. From the ground from up, the right? Ground up. Rise from the prison. Rise like the phoenix. Reborn. All I can say is that he, he made me happy. Like, okay, if he can do that to this degree, why can't I do what I need to do to bring my life up? This is it. Entry clearance, UK. This is so impossible, man. And they open a the door for me, I slide right in there. And once I slide in there, they already know that there's problems. So now he's grabbing sheets of acid. I mean, stuff is just flying around everywhere because he's nervous. I can see his hands show. Grab the stuff, man. Grab the stuff, man. Go, go. Open up the fridge. We, the bag's opening up this weed on the floor. He grabs containers. Oh, shit. Fuck. Damn, man. Fuck, man. Damn, what makes him tougher than us, you know? And at the same time, I'm only 17 years old. There was no turning back after this. I was so nervous. Um, coming to Cambodia, I, at first I felt like it's so hard to fit in with Cambodia because I'm not, I'm not a local and I'm not an expat. We're exiles. We're in between. To me, I have no shame of being a deportee. I am who I am and I will always be this person. I was born in a refugee camp, went to the States when I was five. Yeah, I was born in 1981 at a refugee camp called Kawadang, which is in Thailand. I was, I was born in the refugee camps. Went to the States when I was like three. From there, we went to uh, Williamsburg, Massachusetts. You know, I would get picked on a little. I can, I can be cool with you guys. I could be your friend, but ain't nobody want to be my friend. <laughs> so I would go sit with the other kids and they would all leave. Blah, 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 chink this, chink that. Oh, why are you here? What are you doing here? You don't belong here. I fought with everybody. The white boys done tested me already, and then the Mexicans want to test me. I fought with them. Then they want to bring guns to school, so I had to bring guns to school too. If you're 15, 16, you see your older guys, you know, get shot, you're gonna try to shoot the next guy too. That's all you see in life. Living through that, any kid will go through the same. It doesn't matter what race. White, black, Asian, whatever race you are, you're gonna be just like one of us. If I was to reverse all that school stuff, I reverse it. You wanna slap me, you wanna beat me up, go ahead, man. I find nothing else more valuable than education, like right now. For me, I'm very happy to see Pasar go to London and represent as Cambodia and as a deportee. It's big, it's huge. You know, I got love for the boy. It's just people like exilers that come here and show people how it's done. That's it. That's us. With us all going to, to London, it's, it, that's, this is like that flame, that extra gasoline. It's like I had a bad day. And then just having my mind like, man, you know, my boy, Gasol, he's going to London. Be happy. And that like fuels, like, you know, gets me keep on going. And opportunities are out there. We just have to go out there and get it. You know, I try to be the best person I can be. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm not the greatest person to be around. I'm a teacher with Pasal. I um, I'm a volunteer. I met him. He said he was a spoken word artist, and we just like hit it off there. It was like fire. Let's teach some kids to do spoken word in Cambodia. We're on this. We're gonna do this. And I'm sure that you guys took the two weeks when I was gone to memorize, right? We're gonna work with the first spoken word artists, local, local, local youth that are coming from really tough difficult backgrounds, right? Street kids. Initially, we just started off like, you know, it was fire. I'll give you guys five minutes to go over your pieces, review it. For maybe like the first two or three months, it was all good. We had tons of energy. And then it got harder for him to keep that time commitment. When you commit to something, when you commit all the way, all of a sudden, everything becomes easier. And then Kosal started like, showing up late. I feel bad every single time if I don't make it to class. I know I shouldn't go out the night before class. <laughs> when they ask, you know, is Casal gonna show up today? Uh, not knowing what to say. At one point, everything was so slow, you know? And I'm still trying to catch up, you know? If this is about us teaching the future generation of spoken word artists in Cambodia, Come out to class, damn it. These kids are worth it. <laughs> teacher Gosal, he is a very good teacher. And he never let me like feel down. I miss his face and miss his sound. I love him when 
he was ramming and singing the home, the song called Home. It's been so long since we had a good night's sleep again. And I hope you're gonna be strong. Strong. Miss <laughs> Vick, um, come back and teach me again. I can't trust nobody here, man. Say good things about you in front of you. I can't you. trust nobody here, man. And then behind you, they talk all this smack. Sometimes you just want to be loved. You just want to be accepted. You just want to be a part of something. Yeah, I love that part right there. That, that suck part. Yeah. I just feel like the past month and a half, two months have been horrible, horrible for like, I have been feeling like really shitty because I feel very underappreciated. And now it's like, I feel like I can't trust nobody here, man. Say good things about you in front of you and then behind you, they talk all this smack. Well, how was I supposed to react? I just got dropped on a dime. It hurts because you let, I let people win. I give more than I take. Yeah. I could just leave. There's so many thoughts that's in my head where like, man, you could just leave right now. Just disappear. It looks like it was painful, so. I just took him to, uh, we just took him to the clinic. But as soon as we arrived at the clinic, he felt better. He has a lot running through his head, and he's confused, scared, and... They kept on thinking, and one thought rolls over the next, one thought rolls over the next. We've been down so long. We've been locked up so long that we just, you know, confused in life, too. ...over the next, and one thought rolls over the next, and you can't make it stop thinking. Confused and Confused what's love and what's not, and who really care about you and who don't. One thought rolls over the next, one thought rolls over the next, and one thought rolls over the next. This is my journey. Next. You can judge me. You can say all that you want. Regardless. I won't make it back home one day. Whether it be in flesh and blood, or whether it be in a pine box, one day. Hello, 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 hello. We over here do the fire, the fire. <laughs> We over here sing for Kosal. So today, tonight's gonna be the fundraising party for Kosal. I don't know how many people is gonna attend, but hopefully a lot of people will come down here to support. I know it's gonna be a massive party. Loads of people here. Um, I've got a feeling it's gonna be one of the biggest nights we've ever had. Everybody's coming together and supporting Kosal. I got a big show coming up. I know. It's not I just heard. about Kosal, you know. Congratulations. Thank you. I know. <laughs> come on. <laughs> and then we have to make a box with the donations. I totally forgot about it. Ah, uh, I gotta pick up the business cards. Sanida. Hey, um, can you come to Java? Uh, there's something happening with Kosal and the police. Uh, it seems that the police are looking for him. He just got back from uh, Sinuk village, just went to his guest house. He saw something up, yo. Someone did. Yeah. Someone had to, but yeah. you know, and then someone almost understand because I think somewhere in the high ups, 
where it's like, wait a minute, he representing us in Cambodia? You know, let's let's throw up a Trump up charge and stuff like that and whatnot, and just like it'd be easy to believe, you know, and then hold me back, and I don't even have, to, I can't even get on the plane. Well, well, before we like jump to to anything. Hello, hi, Latina. Maybe it's just um. um, Latina, um, um I don't know what, what it could be. Actually, it's Cambodian. Anything could happen. The what? The guest house people. What did the guest house people do? They they loved him. They they said they loved him as a family and they respect him. What he's doing. What he's representing. They know that he's going to London. So when they got word that the police were coming and searching his place, they just went into his room and just grabbed everything. What did they say the police was looking for? They're looking for drugs. So. The guest house people, they gave me this, they didn't know what this was. They thought it was uh, some kind of a drug. I looked at it and I'm like, okay, it's just regular Advil, you know, headache medicine. You know, so they were being, you know, cautious and trying to help him out. So, because they, they love him. He's a good people. And they just, somebody's trying to set him up. I don't, I don't know. They've been telling you that somebody has been spreading something. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, apparently it's from somebody because I ain't been touched none of that stuff. I know myself. I don't touch none of that stuff. Who, who shoots up? Who like snorts? Who does none of that? I don't do that. All I said, yo, do not get in trouble. Do not do anything stupid. Do not get into anything that can get you kicked off of this stuff. You know? That's what I've been doing. Falling back. People rarely see me. Anyway, uh, you have a show tonight, so the, the goal is to, to keep you free uh, for the show until the show, until the end of the show. Wow, I've never been this nervous. Nothing happened in, in uh, Seville. And, and when stuff like this happens, I'm always reminded of the alchemist. I'm always reminded of Pablo Coelho, you know? When you pursue your dream, when you're committed to it, everything opens up. It's like, wow, 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 wow. But just when you're about to reach it, everything stops. The whole world conspires against you. <laughs> and then remember Linda's email about the immigration? Mm -hmm. You're going to be asked a ton of questions mm -hmm. when you come in. Stay calm, stay cool. You have a visa, you have an invitation. There's no reason why you can't be passed through, okay? You just need them to stamp the thing. Just when you take the shower, rinse all of that off. And let's just go in it with a really good positive attitude and let's not bring the drama. Because if you talk about the drama, the drama is going to follow us. Yeah. And then we get you on that plane. All we have to do, you guys, is leave 7.30 a.m. Then you'll be there. I'm hoping for the best, man. Hoping for the best, definitely preparing for the worst. Just like in the book, in The Alchemist, he's crawling through the desert, walking through the desert, looking for water. He's walking for days, walking for days, and all of a sudden, he's crawling now. And while he's crawling, he sees these pile of bones, piles of skulls. And he thought to himself, this must have been where they gave up. Not knowing that just beyond the horizon, just beyond, is an oasis, water. Be clenched. I just gotta hold on. Things are moving against, but I just have to hold on. It's how bad I want it now. Here we go. It's a lap. You go through the eight mile, you go through the eight mile. Going through eight mile right now, man. Hands are sweaty. Hands are sweaty. Knees weak, arms are heavy. Like my spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and ready to drop bombs, but he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. Big night tonight. You know what I mean? London, here we come. Um, I love this city. I love Cambodia. I love the people. Because the people are so generous, so giving. We keep on giving, man. It's been taken, it's been taken, it's been taken, but and yet people still give. That's what I love about this place. This place is home.
original 13 colonies, man. We're taking it back. Back to the day. Hello? Hi, hi. Um, I'm calling about Kosal Kiev. He was, he just came in on the uh, uh, TG-916 flight from Bangkok. I believe he's being detained right now. Yes, so he is here as a cultural representative from Cambodia. <laughs> okay. This is ridiculous. So what happened is uh, we arrived from Bangkok. Okay, an hour. Huh? I shaved it down maybe an hour. Kosal and I went up to that counter. He showed his Cambodian passport. I showed my Japanese passport. There you go again, Nelson. There you go again. People just staring now. He's just attracting attention. This lady started looking up more and more and more, and she had more questions with Kosal. Uh, waiting for the, I guess, I don't know, double check on the paperwork and whatnot. I guess they might think I'm bogus or something. I mean, I got all the way through over here, right? And she just called me up and said, look, you can go, but I have to... By me or another immigration officer, I am detaining you. Detain your friend. Is there any chance that we could talk to him? We'll see what it is, you know? I mean, I was um, invited. Please put that away now. One of the coordinators with the Poetry Parnassus, she's going to give them a call, give immigration here at the airport a call, and follow up and see what's going on with Kosal. Is he behind the bars? Apparently it doesn't seem to matter much why he's here or that he has a visa. More groovy waiting music. She would not comment about whether there's any chance that he might not even get through. Man. Hello? 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 Is this Kosal? Yes, this is Kosal. Hey, Kosal, this is Linda. Have they told you anything? They haven't told me anything. Well, yeah, I got, I got a blanket and I got, like, yeah, I got access to that, but it's just crazy. It's how, like, how are you going to invite me to your country and, and then come and hold me like a criminal? Sarah Sanders is my contact from Speaking Volumes Tour. Uh-huh. She's on top of it. They have contacts in with immigration lawyers whose specialty is this kind of stuff this this is quite an embarrassment they're confident that they can get him out what i'm nervous about is it's re-traumatizing him <clears throat> yeah. said to me this is happening all over again i'm being treated like a criminal hello and thank you for calling colnbrook immigration removal center and short-term holding facility if you know the extension you need to dial Please press 1, followed by the extension number. If you would like to speak to a detainee, please press 2 for assistance. If you would like to speak to a member of staff, please press 3. Whoa, whoa. What the fuck? There are crazy drivers here. So this is my first day here. Upon arriving, I get picked up by immigration. And what happened? I ended up meeting some people. No man's land. A man with no country. Stuck in limbo. There was a guy that was stuck in there for 10 years. They don't know what to do with him. He's trying to get back home, but they won't send him home. But they won't let him in the country neither. This here is for those with no voice. Those from the struggle. No man's land. Like, there was a whole lane there where people was in traffic, right? And I was thinking, man, where's the Kubota? People would have been dipping already. <laughs> they would have been dipping down the lane and going on the opposite direction. Dang, that smells good. Okay, we're following the Chalupe. We're following the Chalupe. Underground subway, that's what we're doing? We're going on an underground subway. First time. I feel like I'm in like the state. My senses are booming right now. Boom, 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 boom. This is the most white people I've seen in my life. But I don't want China, Chinese food. You don't want Chinese food? I thought we was gonna go for Chalupe. We can do that. Very cool. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, it's like the senses are so alive right now. Wow. I'm aware of everything. Mm, that's why I miss baby back ribs. That is not the best food that I've pork I've had. 
Uh, you know when we get on the street, start street performing around here, boss. Licensed sex shop. Look at that. Everywhere is like shops. You gotta spend money to go anywhere. Exactly. See, propane, that's why I love propane. I can go by the riverfront and just sit there. A call to poetry. Love it. Look at this, man. Oh. Was it meant to be, man? Had to be. Had to be, right? I suppose Martin's right in the sense that if, if you're looking for somebody to blame uh, for the reason why you're here, it's, it's really uh, me and Jude that you should point the finger at. We sat down a couple of years ago over a cup of tea and sketched some ideas uh, on the back of an envelope and had this crazy idea that we should bring a poet from every Olympic country to London during the Olympics. Please come in Olympic year and speak simply about how you view the world now that poetry matters this much. The trouble with poetry is, poems are bullshit. <laughs> Unless they teach. Poems serve absolutely no purpose. Unless they reach. The audience they are written for, the ears they are meant for. He's a poet and tattoo artist. And please clap your hands to welcome Kosal Kiev. <laughs> and welcome Kosal Kiev. <laughs> it's called Moments in Between the Nights. And just to give you a little backdrop on Moments in Between the Nights, I was in Corker State Prison. And that place was crazy. It was a madhouse. It breeded hatred and so many other things. And I remember being warehoused in a room um, with 200 bunks, 400 people. I'm on the top bunk, towel wrapped around my neck, boots laced up, late at night. And I'm looking around and I said, man, these are moments in between the nights. Wow. I had to write this down. There are times in my life, moments in between the nights, where I've laid, bathed in my own grief. See, the streets are only memories, stories told with a glazy stare, knowing full well with a full heart I should be there not here but I am here not there but that's neither here nor there see I'm aware in these moments I'm alone cold in the zone a part of a world where tragedies happen every day I pray for peace some type of solace but release is six years away so it's safe to say to that day comes, I'll be a vacant body, a hollow tomb, forced to witness man's doom. Meanwhile, echoes of a life keeps bouncing off my eyeballs. So what it seems, seems like a dream, but I'm way off. That's me as a teen, then the scene takes off, which replaces a face so I can hardly wait to embrace. So much love. But love slowly face it, hate, resentment lends a hand to an untimely break. So late is the hour when I reach back and think back to what was ours, better yet what was mine. Cause these are times of my life, moments in between the nights where we must reflect on what was lost and check in with my thoughts. See, I've checked it with my chips of sin, and this is the life that I bought. My thoughts keeps going back. I can't help it. My thoughts keeps going black. I can't help it. I keep getting these attacks at night when my mind's wanders back, flipping memories, and I can still see they're still fresh and intact. My conscience weighs on my back. Regrets and shame weighs on my name like chains, and I'm at a point in my life. I'm tired of these nights filled with empty silence, and these days filled with senseless violence. 
So blinding on my thoughts when it rages behind my eyelids as they flutter. Visions of my death within my iris and there I was, laying in the gutters. So what was a quick glimpse of my demise remains shut to these eyes. Now what is visualized is a life I must rise to. Dreading the moment where I must open my eyes to another day I must fight through the same nightmares I close my eyes to. Cause these are times of my life, moments in between the nights where I must reflect on what was lost and check in with my thoughts. Yeah, I've checked with my chips and said, this is the life that I bought. Sometimes, just sometimes, you wish you could die. When crying wouldn't suffice, but you take it with a sigh. And you roll to your side so that tear goes unnoticed from the eyes who deems it a weakness to those who can't cry. So here it is on your whys and what is, what should have been, what should have happened, what your life's supposed to be. You never ran the streets, you was told to ease up on that gun clapping, but the money and fame was too enticing. Life behind bars wasn't that frightening, so your eyes were sighted on the fast life, the lights and glamour, but then it all came crashing down like a hammer. Correction, a gavel. A man in a black robe, 16 years old, 16 years, 85%, two strikes and off you go, another branded cattle. So here I am, trying to unravel the sequences of my life. What came first? What came last? Too much time has lapsed, eight years to be exact. See, these are times in my life, moments in between the nights. Well, I must reflect on what was lost and check in with my thoughts. See, I've checked it with my chips of sin. And this is the life that I bought. Thank you. I don't really want to go into details about, you know, what we did do in the past whatever, but, you know, make a long story short, basically, we all got locked up for attempted murder. Mm. We ended up shooting some people, and, you know, we, we went to jail, you mm -hmm. know. With Casal, we got into a lot of trouble. Back then, I mean, the first thing, you know, is, is pretty much, if you see another group, it's gonna be, you know, where you from, you know? If, you know, they don't say the same three acronym, then, you know, then that's pretty much it. You know, get off on them, you know? No, yeah, no, I'm not so worried about getting jacked in London. I mean, you know, I can pretty much take care of myself. Right. I'm worried about what I would do to them. I think it was the first week I got out, my brother and his family wanted to go bowling. You know, walking and stuff like that alone at nighttime is like, man, I'm like, man, I wonder if someone's gonna test me out. He was like, hey, Poe, is that you? He was one of the guys that got shot. Let's go hit him up, man. Right. Hey, yo, where you from? Damn, man. Well, I'm going back to jail, you know? I got a record, so who do you think they're going to bring? You see one of your enemy that you shot, he happened to live, and, you know, but it didn't play out that way. Where you from? I'm from Cambodia. What's up? <laughs> he came, he spoke to me, and uh, he was like, you know, what happened happened. He's past all that, you know, and you know, we, we talked for a second and he, you know, he asked me how basically everyone that, that got locked up for shooting him doing, you know, it, it was kind of weird. I guess, you know, let bygone be bygone. It's cool, it's cool, it's like, you know, it's all love, you know what I mean? Like, one, one, one fan. He was like, he was looking at me, so I looked back at him. You know, I did the, I did, I did the path to the heart. You know what I mean? He was like, he was, he tripped out. He was like, what? He was like, so he did the pound back. I'm like, man, I did the salute. He was like, he was really excited just to take a picture with me. He was like, man, I'm really feeling your, I'm really feeling your stuff. And I'm like, man, that's what's up, man. I'm glad, man. You know? <laughs> that's the direction you're gonna go now? Yeah, I'm going prep. Look, from man. I'm going prep. Huh? From thug to preppiness. From thug to prep, right? Yeah, you do this like so like tattered up and it's like, what the hell? Very disciplined, right? Great, yeah. And, like he looks educated, but he's not. <laughs> very like together, posh. Yeah, very put together. 
than when I just come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very unassuming. Um, today I'll be reading. Uh, you look like a college newspaper editor. Oh, it used to be uh, me, Scotty, Tevin, Casal, Ghost, uh, Ronnie, Bayface. There's quite a few of us, Scrappy. And Scrappy now, he's uh, got double life. How did he get double life? Uh, they ended up catching a couple murder cases. How old was he when he got the double life? Mm, I think he was like 16. Yeah, so 16 and with that much time, you know. I don't really know what to say. Uh, this is the park we used to hang out at. Mm -hmm. At least one of the parks. This is where uh, the cops always swoop on us. You know, sometimes we get away. We just run around the trees, the bushes. Up there on the rocks, you can see who's coming up the park. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's someone that we don't get along with, you know, trap them right here. And then what happens next? Huh? We get them. <laughs> At the age of 17, hanging out here with Kusa, what were you looking for? I don't know. I think we were just looking for recognition, acknowledgement, I guess. Because half the time, I don't even know why we do what we do. It's more a sense of belonging, responsibility, duty. You're pretty much a soldier, you know? You fight for what you believe in, for the cause. You know, your people. Your family. This is where Casal got put in. Ask them once, where do you think we'll be in 10 years? And the answer is pretty much, I don't know, probably day. And that was like the norm. That's how all of us felt. One of us is here living and breathing. We didn't really value life like that. Like I do now, you know? Living and breathing with a heart that continues to keep on beating. My cause these days, you know, for my family, you know? For the little ones. It's all the boys in blue. Marty Williams, Patrick Nolan, you here with me. You know, I'm happy just coming home and a two-year-old nephew, you know, wait for me at the door, you know? He, he heard me unlocking the door and, you know, there he is, you know, waiting for me to pick him up, you know? And, that's what makes me happy these days, you know? You do realize that life is a lot bigger than uh, what you had imagined when you was a kid. Out of all of us, it seemed like I, I'm, I'm the only one left out here. Everyone else out of the country or, you know, doing life. At one point in time, being in a cave, and all of a sudden you come out and you dreamt, you know, you dreamt wide open spaces, you dreamt of prairies, you dreamt of fields. Thank you guys, man. I remember those conversations in the dark. Those conversations were like glimpses of light. Never really fully realizing that one day it would happen. That one day I'd be standing here. These are tears of joy, man. Tears of joy. And I'm happy to shed them. Dreams being lived. I thank you guys, man. And then, did you look outside before? Yes. Are you still outside? No, it's okay. Let's go outside. That's not how I get dressed when I go to prison. That's <laughs> me in a play. As an actress, I witness and I experience the power of the arts to transform. And I believe that every human being has the potential to create value in the world. For me, the arts is the most effective way and most expedient way to be able to do that. Casal was in our first class that we did at CRC. There are issues that are uh, unaddressed 
that most people that are in prison are going to get out someday. We have, in California, a complete lack of any kind of desire or concern for rehabilitation. Well, let me give you a little background first. When we first started doing this work, uh, I had done time and gotten in a lot of trouble when I was a kid and uh, ended up finding myself facing a felony murder charge at 17. When I got out of prison, I was worse. I was way worse. And I think most men come out much, much worse. I'm so inspired when I see these people who are considered the dregs of society. When I see them transform their lives with so much courage and so easily, really, I feel like this actually actual proof of the power of the arts. A person that represses fear, for example, or represses their sadness is a time bomb. And I've only ever once had a dangerous situation, actually because Sal was in the class, with this guy called, who had LA on his face. And I was trying to get him to allow himself to experience anger. And you can't touch anybody, but you can get angry at me. You know, when I sat in the first circle and they said, your rage is welcome here, I thought, you guys are nuts. You bumped your head. You, so, you know, if I get full of rage, somebody's going to get hurt. And so, he did get angry and he went like he was going to hit me. Everything just slowed down. Everything went in slow motion. I'm going to tear this room apart. My rage is capable of doing some really violent stuff. And I could feel all the guys behind me, the rest of the class, were like, go ahead, see what happens to you. And he just went, oh. Well, the rest of the session, he was fantastic. He crossed a barrier in his relationship with women, I'm sure. You know, most men don't show their grief or their sadness, you know? In fact, most rage, most anger, is just the cork that keeps all the grief in the bottle. You know, that for me is a, a reminder of where we are, but I don't feel scared because I feel like we're giving them something. We're not taking something from them, we're giving them a gift. More times than not, if a man can get to that, he'll drop right below it, spends very little time in the anger, and drops right into the grief or the sadness or whatever has has caused him to feel that broken-hearted experience that I think everybody's familiar with that, that happens in life. How we doing, Manchester? <laughs> Anybody from contact in the world in the house? A human being is capable of great compassion and great empathy. It doesn't matter what abstract you've been given by the media. And the human soul is much more generous than any media outlet ever is. A lot of the men that we work with have got uh, life without parole. Uh, we get asked the question, you know, why are you working with men who are never going to get back on the streets? Um, but I think as a responsibility to, to each other, you know, no one can really be said that they're um, unsalvageable. Every person deserves a second chance. Especially men like Miner can have the opportunity to one day come back and and help us give other men the chance. There were people that helped me, and, and, I, and I know that's, that's what seems to make a difference in our world, is, is all of us reaching out to each other at some level in some way. I, I want the world to be a place where humans are valued, and you know, when you, I don't know what the guys have done, I don't know what their background is, but I guarantee these people have been damaged at some point in their life. I don't want that to happen anymore. <laughs> and that's what drives me, and it's not that I'm a particularly compassionate person. I mean, the reason I practice Buddhism is because I'm not compassionate, <laughs> and I need to know how to be compassionate, but I am very passionate. Bones bearing in the country I call home. I write for you, the listeners, to listen up. Take a step back and imagine the bigger picture. Because I write the real song. Feel me. strong I've been in. It just might be. They have a waiting area. Yeah. It's classy. I mean, what do you want to do with your life, man? I have no idea. You got any dreams or anything? I can't tell you a straight way answer because I have a lot of plans. Now, whichever one falls first, and that's what's going to fall first. But the creator, my creator, me and him, right? Or me and her, or me and it. Whatever that's out there that's controlling all this. If he wants to put me in a place where it's like dark, 
who put me in a place that's dark. I understand that. I might not get it, but I understand it. Okay, just listen to the question, please. Yes. If you don't have a job, and you are not in any active pursuit of trying to find a way to earn money, how do you expect to be able to eat every day and actually have a place to live? I don't want to get stuck in a job. Dude. I'm not, no, I'm not going to work for anyone. Okay, but you still Point blank. To, like, pay rent I, I and that. eat. I understand that, and it's going to come. I'm not okay. worried about all that. I'm not worried about money. Money come and go. Money doesn't rule me. Some people have, some people have everything that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But are they living? Walking, coming, going, where they're at in their lives, wondering where are they walking to, where are they coming from? Are they happy? Are they well with themselves? Do they have ambitions? Do they have dreams? So me coming from a dark place, uh, homeless was nothing. I'm not, I'm not with my mom, I'm not with my family. I'm homeless right now, even if I have a home. But are you living? Wait, of course wait. I'm living. Okay, no, my, my question is. <laughs> Am I living? No, but off. I am so living right now. I'm living to the fullest of my own potential. Um, I, can't, I can't afford to spend anymore. And I, I miss Cambodia as well. So we stick to the plan and we go back and we we'll see what awaits for me over there. The other day, I came right here, sat right here, right, and then the cat came up. Fat old cat, too. Just came up to me. Boom. And, and like about like two, three minutes later, a fox came. And the fox was looking at the cat. The cat was looking at the fox. And the cat just sat on his haunches. He just sat on his haunches, just looked at him. And the fox walked away. Like, man, what's up, man? You know? Like, yeah, walk on. If that fox tried to do anything to that cat, I would... Get away, fox! Fox left. Wonder where he at. But I am not a prison poet. I can't enchant you with metaphors for gray, the image of a torn throat, or with a few words cast a shadow bars across your eyes. And I can't stand on a concrete soapbox and tell you what's wrong with the world and God or what makes the heart feel the tales of beaten dogs. It's like I said, I'm not a prison poet. Back to reality, man. Back to reality. Dream is over, man. About to go on and live another dream. I, and when we 
found out that you know he was prosecuted and in a sense we we were not that shocked you know when he doesn't come home sometimes that's stressful on your parents they stay up they cry they wait for you behaviorally he be became somewhat almost incorrigible. I used to see him sitting down, polish his pistol. He did not want to go to school, very rebellious and aggressive with his um, verbal. I've seen the whole family cry over Kosal. The day that he was uh, gave in his sentence, that day was in the back of my mind just like yesterday, very quiet. Everyone got ready. No one said a word. They just get ready. It was like a, a, a going to a funeral. I came to the U.S. when I was roughly 11 years old. And um, I think Kosal was about one years old back then. Mom had seven children. But life was, was good, even though we didn't have any uh, money. We, we were one loving, united family. Couldn't ask for a better family than, than my family. A family experienced much hardship like all of Khmer families in Cambodia. Communists come 1975. They know my husband very sure the soldier. They take he go to kill. I have six kids. Not seven, not yet, Kosal. After three days, the soldier, communist, come to tell my family, go to take the body your husband put in the ground. My brother and my mother-in-law go to take body my husband put in the ground that she cannot do because the ply so much in the body and smell bad too. They take only head, they take one piece give to me. I put in the ground in a small home in a jungle. One, two, three. Happy birthday to While he was in prison, my family and I would go visit him a lot. I had to explain to my kid when they ask, why is uncle there? I wholeheartedly believe that if my brother was walking on the street, he would not survive. I thank God because I'll stay in a state prison. You make mistake. We make mistake. You support to learn. I kind of wish we, we did a lot more for him. Was it mom's fault? Was it sibling's fault? Was it the grandma's fault? All of us somehow... We failed to somehow to be there for him. Where were we when Kasal needed us the most? So I'm... I'm, I'm done with all the regret, all the what if, I could have, I should have, you know. For me, I, I went through his, his age also. I came here 14, 15. But when I stepped in this land, I already had an absolute code of conduct as a young man found in the, in the Holy Bible. So I saw myself as us and them already. Because uh, Saul, it was different, I think. He was, he was come out a little bit confused as what he wanted. But ultimately, he, he, he chose. That's true. You cannot run away from problem. You cannot. What you do, you pay. And, you know, during of all these incidents, it's, he was a child. He wasn't thinking straight. And At this magnitude, it was his first time to trial him as an adult. I think it is, uh, I think it's not fair. I think, I think the legal system Fail him. He didn't make the right choice, but he served his time. He should be given a second chance to stay with us. It's just unjust. The torture of being 
separated from his family, that, that is inhumane, in my opinion. Very inhumane. I try to do everything. The best I can do. But I cannot right now. Right now we want is a chance to be with him and to see him and hopefully they'll give him a chance to come back to us. I thank God for your life. I hope he come back. I don't know they send to Cambodia. Mama, I love you. Know that I hug you. Witness these words as they tumble to love you. Tumble to hug you. See, Mama? Mama. I love you, Moms. I know maybe you realize all the bad things that's happening, but none of it was your fault. None of it was any of y'all fault. It's to all my brothers and sisters. But I got the strength from y'all. Thank you. Thank you for still believing in me. Never giving up on me. Because I always knew that he has so much talent. I would say such a momentous moment. It's like... Yes, we're so proud of him right now. As a family. One day soon, the wall is falling. Let's break down all the walls. One day soon, all these walls will break down. All the barriers, all the boundaries. And I'll be back home again. Been separated for too long. And I miss you guys more than ever. I said, Moy is a warrior, Bay is a clan, Bay is a tribe, the descendants of man. Boon is an army, Bram is a nation. Huddled in sight for survive by our patience. Like yeah. La guerre, c'est la guerre fait toutes les familles qui séparent. Voilà, les manques entiers, il faut connaître. La guerre, c'est comme ça. Il faut finir la guerre. Les manques entiers, il faut finir la guerre. Il faut détruire toutes les armes des manques entiers. Ça fait 33 ans. So somebody, I'm going to be, so what, to be unknown. They want to get, so they want to get, they want to get. To the same politics, they want to get. Feel the politics, stop. Feel the politics, pull it up. They want to get. Merci. Like, wow. <laughs> so I'm like stuck. I'm, I'm just to, for it to come out the way it did, like randomly. Like, how did she find me? Like, yeah, how did she find you? I don't know. I haven't asked. Right. I, I'm being her just messaging. How, when did you find out? When did you just, get this message? Just now, just recently, like about like maybe 20 minutes ago. I get a message out of the blue, a friend request actually. Hey, I'm from France. I don't know too much English, so, but I have a question. And then the next, like, she's typing it out, and then she sent me a picture, a baby picture of me. Yeah. Like, how'd you get this picture? And she's like, my dad gave it to me. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, what does that mean, your dad? And you're like, yeah, he, like, oh, he looks just like you. Um, he misses you. He's very sad, he loves you. I ran away from communist and I come to my aunt home. I saw that Gosol. Next day, where you wanna go? I said, I don't know, I don't know where. United States, they opened the camp in the Kawada. He wanna help me too. He won't involve with me. He say, are you married with me? I have your kid. I stay with him maybe two, three months. I had pregnant. Go on. Very, very uh, drink uh, beer, but uh, 
I am uh, very very happy. I uh, know my son. Come and see me uh, tomorrow afternoon. Hi, can you stop by? Are you back on time? Can you manage? Can you manage to talk on time? Salap ke. sorts of stuff right like all sorts of stuff right now but I can't help but to feel anger too like this angry at the whole situation of so many years part you know so many years wasted angry at why why the separation happened in the first place angry at like I have a newfound anger at, at even the Khmer rules you know like Hey, that all them years part. Then I mean, everything's supposed to happen the way it's supposed to be, right? Thank you, thank you. It's been a long journey here, meeting family for the first time. Amazing, blessed. Um, this next piece is called Love You I. I'm swimming through butterflies because your eyes remind me of sunlight. Reflected moonbeams filled with dreams of sunshine. See a surfacer's purpose or worth is nine times eternity. Earth merged with dirt, she's worthy of love. Pure joy. <laughs> 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 I think in Khao Dang, no Chonburi, not Khao Dang, Chonburi, when we found out that we did not pass the test to come to the U.S., mom decided to be separate from Kosal's dad. Supposedly, um, Kosal's father answered um, incorrectly with the questions. Yes, Kosal's dad really um, wanted a Kosal. No, that's our, our brother. You cannot separate him from us. You know, as much as his dad loved him, we didn't want to give Kasal up. And uh, um, Murphy G came, he was telling my mom that we should all stay together. And then my mom was like, got scared, saying like, no, what if we stay here, you know, four or five years? And like, my older siblings, they're already old and they're like, you know, like they won't be able to learn anything. So then he said, okay, you know, and he made, changed the paperwork and stuff like that. And, and he let her go. Oh, damn. I can understand my mom's like point of view as well, you know, like I'm not mad or anything like that. I can understand the sacrifice my bad had to make too as well. But that's the soldier's way, right? Like, you know, don't worry about me. Like, I can take care of myself. I've been at war like for all these years, you know, like I can take care of myself. You guys go get safe. 
sacrifice, man. And for him to be who he is today, loving, open, honest. <clears throat> He's a rare man. <laughs> I'm just proud to be his son. Proud to be his son. This is the path that you're gonna be on. It's almost as if it was set long ago. So me being deported, it was meant to be. You know? The human spirit, no matter how many times you may fall, no matter how many times you get beaten up, no matter how many times you get kicked down, um, that it will always search to thrive. Not just survive. There's a saying, which I really love. You have no idea how strong you are until being strong is the only option you have. Alors, excusez-moi, 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 merci. Lundi, mais exceptionnellement, on reçoit un artiste cambodgien exceptionnel. Il s'appelle Kozal. Merci de lui faire beaucoup de bruit et passer un bon moment. Um, thank you for having me here. This is the first time in Paris. It's a beautiful city. Love it. City of love. I was so negative and so full of anger. And that's what writing came to me. And poetry and, you know, me learning on Raymond Ruroki, uh, Edward Stein, Mary Oliver. So many poets that... Man. I, I don't remember a birthday. <laughs> I don't ever remember man, blowing out candles, man. But that's man, awesome, man. though, man. man. That's... You know, I would've been... Right there, Smiling side by side, just chilling, like, like okay, and it wouldn't be none of this. None of this would be happening. All the past two years would have been deleted. Would you join them, live a normal life in California, and give up all the things you have done in spoken word ever since coming to Cambodia? Would you exchange that, delete all that? Just to be with your family. Yeah, I would, man. I'd give it up, man. An instant, boom. Right there, chilling with Brian right here. Come from day of work, we've been working, boom, boom, come back, chill, maybe play some video games. Yeah. Go shoot some hoops. Wouldn't need nothing. None of this, man. No one would know me, and that's fine with me. You know, I'm a part of something now, but a part of something that I've always wanted and true unconditional love and it's just you know realizing that man that's... I got robbed you know making my way home again that's what I'm doing right now I'm making my way home again this started a long time ago this journey right now is still continuous I have yet to make it home and I made a promise I'm gonna make it home somehow some way I don't know how but it's gonna happen. I don't know when, but it's gonna happen. Take me home. Said I'm ready to roll. So go ahead and take me on home. I'm ready to rest my head down low. Said I'm ready to go. And only the good Lord know how much farther I got. Baby, I'm coming home. 365 days times that to 16, man. I've been six to 16 with six dreams with six beans, aim like six fiends. Ready to shoot and kill my pain like dope fiends, full of dopamine and morphine, 600 motions of codeine. Man, I gotta do 14. Plus some odd months and days of wasting away in these last days. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to roll. 
Lord save her, place me, I'm ready to show my worth in this damn cursed place, I'm ready to go. See, I'm dog tired of this dog mire, put flames underneath these raw tires, I'm all fire, man, I'm coming through and it's on a live wow. I said I'm ready to roll. So go ahead and take me on home. I'm ready to rest my head down low. Said I'm ready to go. And only the good Lord knows how much farther I got. Baby, I'm coming home. Man, the sun is beaming. Pinch me. The product was some must be dreaming. My back, I must have. I see dimes in the sky. Dimes in your eyes. I'm shining, I'm dying to fly. I'm no angel, but I'm dying to try. Even if I have to blaze heat with my bricks and burners, nurture what nature coach and I don't hate you, I just hate these vultures. Thought you thought you picked my thoughts clean, but my thoughts mean red or red, I dot beam. Tell them, man, I'm just trying to start clean. Said I'm ready to roll. So go ahead and take me on home. I'm ready to rest my head down low. I said I'm ready to go. And only the good Lord knows how much farther I got. Baby, I'm coming home.